This is where we left off in our last video where we implemented the logic of if a user clicks the action button here, the entire HTML gets deleted with the plot and then an action link appears here. So if we delete all the plots and we have three action links here and if we click them nothing happens yet. And in today's video we'll be going to implement the code that if we click an action link the visualization pops back into the page again. And how we're going to do that, we're going into the JS script and in here we're going to say document and then if we click on the action link, then we're going into the function. So in order for this code and this function to be triggered, we have to add this class here inside here. So whenever we click an action link, we're going into that function and then we want to get the ID of the action link that has been clicked. So we're just going to copy paste the code like this. That's how we get the ID. And then after that, we want to get the label of the action link. So what we're going to do is just going to say P plus click ID. And then we're here in the A tag. Now from there, we have to go into the parent. And then from there, we can grab the text and then we can trim off any white space that's there. And now that we have the label of the action link, we have to send that to the server. So in order to make JavaScript in R communicate, we're going to say shiny set input value. And then how we're going to access the, the label, the JavaScript variable, we're going to access that in the server with input dollar sign. And we're going to say header. And we're going to send this variable to R from JavaScript. After that, we can then remove the action link. And we can do this similarly like this. So we're just going to copy paste this. And then instead of class underscore, we're saying added underscore clicked ID and then remove the action link that way. So now there are again two scenarios. One scenario is where there is no graph on the page yet. So if we remove an action link without any graph on the page, the visualization appears on top of the page. And if there's already a visualization on the page, if we remove an action link, the next graph or plot appears after the last existing graph on the page. So in order to do that, we ha have to have an if statement. And what we can do here, we can basically copy paste this as well and then instead of looking for the added underscore class and seeing if there is an action link in the document we're seeing if there is a plot already on the page so we're looking for is there anything is there any class that's called class underscore something so any class that scores, scores that starts with class underscore something, we're going to get here and then we're going to check the length. And if the length is greater than zero, then we're going into the if statement. And then from here, we're basically going to get the last, the class of the last visualization on the page. So here we're going to say last panel equals, then we can copy paste this. Then we can say last class. That's how we're going to get the last class of the node list. And then we again send this value to shiny from JavaScript. So we say shiny dot input value. Then we can say last panel. So that's how we're going to access the class 
with input dollar sign last panel and we're going to send this to shiny now in the else statement in the else statement that's the case if there is no plot yet on the page then what we're going to do we're just going to copy paste this and then we're also going to call this last panel but instead of the variable just going to send a string to the shiny server and the string is going to be place holder and this place placeholder is going to be an ID that is on the very top of the page so we can copy paste this and then after the break here we can say div ID equals placeholder then we do a comma and we say shiny tag list and then we put all of this into a tag list I'm going to indent it properly I'm going to save it and then there's one more thing to do here so whenever we click on an action link an observer gets triggered on the server side so in order for the observer to get triggered we're going to send the clicked ID to the shiny server as well so what we can do we can say clicked link and here this is going to be clicked ID Now we're going to save this. Now we're going back into the app.r file. And now in here, what we're going to do is we're going to say shiny. We have an observe event. And here we're going to say input dollar sign. And then we're going to say input dollar sign clicked link. So whenever we click the action link, the observer gets triggered. And now we're inside here. Now in here we have to add the HTML code with the plotly plot. So we can copy paste all of this. And then we're going to put this into a separate R file. So here we have the code and we can make this a function. And the variables are going to change. There are going to be three. One is this one. So the class is always going to be different for every visualization that we have on the page. So we can say class specific. Then here the header is also always going to be different. We can call this header. And here we have to have a unique ID for every action button. Now we're just going to copy paste this in here. And then we can call this function or source this function in the app.r file. I'm going to save this. and here and then we're going to source this here in the app.r file after we load the libraries so what we can say is we can say list.files and then we want to list all the files that are in the ga dashboard slash r folder so we say ga dashboard slash r so in here we got the R script and then from there we're going to use the here package which gets us the project directory from here we're going into the GA dashboard folder and then from there we're going into the R folder 
and then we have the dot placeholder here. So if we run the code, we have here the path, and then we're going to source this file. And because there are going to be multiple files inside the R folder, we're going to use per walk. Then we create an anonymous function and then source all the scripts that are inside the R folder. Now we can go back and we can go into this observer here and inside here we can say plot and then we can use this function here in order to create the HTML we need. So the class specific is going to be input dollar sign and then we can see here that the class specific is going to be this except we have to use paste zero and then we can say class underscore input dollar sign click link the header is going to be input dollar sign header and the unique ID is going to be input dollar sign click link. Now we're going to use the insert UI function from Shiny. And here we have to have a selector. We call this CSS selector. We're going to code that up in a bit. Then where do we want to insert it? We want to insert it at after begin, uh, after end. And then lastly, we have to specify the UI and the UI is equal to plot. And now we have to specify where we want to insert this UI here. We can do that with the CSS se selector. And we're going to have an if else statement here. And we're going to say if the last panel is equal to hashtag placeholder. So if input dollar sign last panel is equal to placeholder, then the entire UI here gets inserted after the placeholder, placeholder ID here. So we can just say placeholder. And if this is not the case, then it's just going to be input dollar sign last panel. And then we can run this. Oh, I forgot to put a, so we can say paste zero. Then we say dot comma input last panel. Now we can run that. And then we have here our three visualizations. If we delete this one and then trying to add this one back we can see that if we click the action link, the visualization and all the HTML pops back into the screen. So this one went into, in the JS file, went into the if statement. So there are two visualizations already on the page. So if we click the action link, the visualization number one gets inserted after this one. So basically after class underscore C, this one gets inserted. And I think what I forgot is in the JS file, I forgot to say priority event. So whenever we're going to click it, this event gets fired and the value gets sent to R. So it's not only happening once, it's going to happen every time 
we we'll click on the button or the action link. So if we save this and then we run the application again, we're going to delete it, then we're going to add it, we're going to delete it again, we're going to add it, we're going to delete this one and this one, we're going to add it. Let's try to delete every single visualization. Visualization three, visualization one, and visualization number two. So it seems to be working, and that was everything we wanted to do for, for this video. Again, if you want to visit my blog, the link is down below, and you can read up on, on the code and can also see how, how I did it there. And next time what we're going to do is we're going to, to we're going to be implementing some graphs some more specific graphs we're using actual data from my blog and we're also distinguishing between the google analytics api data and the google search console api data so what we will be doing we're going to have some more we're going to have some some more additional arguments inside the google analytics function